So we're going to take a look at these files here and basically we have six different DXF files. And I'm just going to select them and move them into the material as they're brought in. I'm being too worried about exactly where everything goes. So I'm just going to bring these in so I can kind of evaluate them and, and see how everything looks here. There's the fourth one. This one. And of course these could all be in a single DXF file and imported at once. Or uh, well, now we have the last one here. So here's our... Uh, Here's our DXF files. Now these are doors. Um, one thing we don't know exactly here is what kind of toolpaths we're going to apply to each of these. So, you know, we could just apply something generic for now, but there would be a process of uh, defining a profile tool and then using it. And uh, there's a movie on our website about how to define a profile tool and then route. Basically, uh, when you come to the tool library here, we're just going to consider the flat part of the tool is typically what the most flat part touching the surfaces and as I said there's there's a movie about that so for now in this example we'll use some other types of tool paths but but to really make these look the way they're intended to look we would need to know what kind of profile tools and how to define them so that we can ap apply the proper tool paths so I'm going to go through each of these and uh, if I look at this file well, these are all open contours so I'm going to select them and right click and it, it merges everything together. It looks like here's a separate file that was unmerged, but here we have an outer shape. Here we have an inner shape. And uh, here we have some just internal components. Uh, actually, I see a little bit of a grid there, so I'm going to turn that off. Okay, so here's our uh, our one part. Now, if I look at this one, this one's pretty, pretty straightforward. We're just going to merge these back together. The outer border here is already merged, and these look like just engraved lines, so we won't do that one. Now this one, I'm not quite, I'm not really sure which of these two are supposed to be part of the end job here, so I'm just actually hitting my control key and, and unchecking those, so that now when I merge this together, these are closed shapes, and this would remain as a, let me just select this one here. We're going to right click that and merge this back into one continuous shape. So, and I'm not really sure. It might have been that this should have been continuous here, and this is an inside path. I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, either way, it could work there. Uh, this part here, it looks like we have just internal components and a, and a cutout, so that's fine. And again, here we're just going to select this, right click it, and say merge selection. So I think we have everything here. Now, uh, for the internal components on any given one of these, you know, when we're going to come here and apply a toolpath, uh, the toolpath is either going to go to the um, route, it's going to be a routing offset where you might come to the inside of the line, and I don't really have anything here, so let's come down and choose a, a uh, 12 millimeter OG tool and put in a depth of, let's say, uh, oh, seven millimeters I'm not sure how deep would go there exactly and this is going to go to the inside of this line all right and hit apply and so now we would have applied a toolpath to the inside now maybe on this one we either want to go to the outside or directly on top the line uh, if we want to go directly on top the line then we're going to choose a let's go down here again to A millimeter OG tool, seven millimeters deep, or however deep. Now, this will go directly on if we hit F. Oh, in this case, we're going to have to hit F10. And uh, see if we're just go here to the view setup and see if we can take a look at this. I just wanted to see this uh, by by tool here and show us the depth of what's being removed so you know sometimes I might even come in here and draw a little circle to represent the diameter of the tool but you know there would be some some amount of tool not covered here and so we just need to know what the tools are so we could properly define this now again we might come here and, and do these two as engraves as well 
and then come in here and choose this one and this will do as a 2d engrave with a V group tool and we'll go down so we'll just say 2d engrave here and now it's just going to cut along that path so um, when it comes down to the cutout toolpath we would come here and put a, uh, a toolpath that would cut out the, the material uh, let's say this is going to be 20 millimeters deep and um, hit OK here. So there's going to be some kind of cutout. And also, if you wanted to do an engraved toolpath here with, with a tool, you could put a profile around the outside of the part. So any given one of these could have a number of, of profiles on here. This part's going to just get a cutout. And let's say we're going to do a female. So since I just used this other one, let's come here and edit this. Now to remember that one, then I'll say I'm going to do a female toolpath on this part. These two, let's just do a 2D engrave. Uh, you know, without knowing exactly what we want to add here, I'm just going to kind of throw something up here just to get some value. All right, so let's select everything here and hit Control. So we just have the internal components here selected. Let's go five millimeter deep as a 2D engrave and would engrave that part. Now this is going to get a cutout tool path on the outside. Twenty millimeters deep, and these internal components. Let's see if I have any really big tools here. It looks like I have a. Something with one and a half inch cut cut width here. Seven millimeters, and let's just do a 2D engrave there. No, that's that's way too big. This one here, I might just go to the inside of this. All right. So by editing the tool bath, I'm just Remembering that that's the last toolpath used. And this one will do the uh, 2D engrave with a, uh, a cove tool. And then we'll just do this one with this little oh, uh, female cut. And we're going to say depth of seven millimeters here. We'll go to the left of the line. So that'll just keep right on track there with the same toolpath. And we'll do cutout toolpaths on these. And you can see without having a little better idea of, actually, I need to, need to re toolpath this one as well. Without having some idea of which tools we're going to be using here, it's a little bit of guesswork. and. And this would be quite specific, actually, as to which tools we're going to use. Now, let's say on these three, we're going to do a internal twelve millimeter internal cut, and then there might be some kind of other cleanup there. So. Uh, This one we'll do 2D engrave with a V groove tool. We'll do this an internal tool path. All right, so there we have um, just a bunch of tool paths applied here. Uh, then I would uh, probably want to group these together, so I'm going to hit Control G after I've selected what I want to stay together. And I'm being careful just to drag the box right around the, the parts that I, I want to stay. All right, now we've got all these parts together. So uh, we should be able to come over here and 
that want to nest these parts into the material. We're going to nest the originals. Do middle left as our orientation. 90 degree rotation angle. Maybe a 0.25 gap, just a small gap between the parts. And then we will have nested the pieces in here. All right, and uh, again, let's go to the view menu, view setup. By lines. And we can see that, well, since we just did actually 0.25 millimeters, that's not much spacing at all. But uh, here we've nested the parts and we'd be ready to output them. But there was a manual process here of, of grouping everything and, and uh, merging it first and then applying the toolpath. And that could be made easier by using layers, you know, uh, things that would get the same toolpath being on the same layer. And so there's a number of ways that this could be, uh, could be sped up and, and made easier. And uh, here, if we want to do a little simulation here of the finished parts. And uh, actually, the, the profiles of a profile tool is not going to show up here. It's just going to show me where, where the uh, material is going to cut based upon the tool definition. And sometimes with a profile tool, it's even going to cut outside of the area as you have it defined and in route. So, um, so it may not fully represent a profile tool cut here, but it will show you uh, where the geometries are going to cut out when they're placed on the plate. All right, so here's a little uh, uh, preview of the layout and, the, and where the cuts would be.